Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about The Witcher, Nightmare of the Wolf. This is an animated show or animated movie in, in that sense from Netflix. It is based in the Witcher world and again I've done some podcasts on The Witcher but I'll say it again. I've never really played much of the games. A little bit of one game, uh, a friend had it. But I've done huge deep dives on all the animation from the games and cut into a movie and a bigger deep dive into the books and the audio books and the lore because I started a Witcher campaign, uh, used the AD&D second edition rules, and I have a couple of players that we play online. So I'm not too familiar with the gameplay and the story in the game is more for me, what I watched on YouTube, like they'll have people that'll take the four hours of the movies in the game. I watched all those, read some of the books, maybe most of them. You know, I'd have to go back and check. But I'm a big fan, and a friend really wanted to play in a Witcher world and create a Witcher, and we did that. So I do have some basis in the Witcher world, but I will admit to not being the biggest, uh, you know, nerd on it. But... I'm going to say this is very good. Witcher Nightmare of the Wolf is a very good animated movie. But I have issues with it, and I'll explain a little bit. So we're talking about um, a prequel in the sense that it's basically Geralt or Geralt's um, mentor, Vesemir. It's his youth. In his prime Witcher days. And you're telling the story from that angle. So it's years before we see the TV show. Because I'm guessing the mainstream is the TV show right now. Although the games. And I'm sure there's a huge amount of fans. And But you know. For what's in people's minds right now. It's the TV show. I think. This is one of those times. Where the script needed one more Passover. Because there's some great animation, there's great cinematography, there's actually a couple, I wouldn't say unique, but really interesting ways of them using the camera angles. And again, you're in the genre of a, you know, a, a horror animated, you know, uh, I think the site calls it a dark fantasy in a, um, you know, setting, and the tone was good. However, when I say a Passover on the script, because you've got all these good things going on. The music is decent. It's not too intruding. It helps with the story. The loud bangs and scare things kind of work for what you were going for. Remember, this is, again, a horror type. You know, it's a, they're monster hunters, which is, in, in a sense, they're monsters themselves. And this tackles a lot of that with the plot. However, you've got... A young Vesemir, as I hope that's how you say his name, and in his, let's say, prime, but for him the prime might be 80 years old, right? Because the witches live a long time. Then they go back to his childhood childhood, and there's a little bit of a confusion and a disjointing of what's going on with who, and then there's the plot you're going through with the movie as him as a, well, a witcher, and, again, there's a little more confusion. Maybe I tend to get a little too potted out and, you know, I watch these things, but this is something that draws me in, and I'm already, you know, laser-focused on it, in a sense. But, you listen, things happen. Again, time of people's lives, what's going on, and, you know, things could be missed. But we've got a plot that, um... You know, he, he, witches get paid for their work, and they got to bring proof, and there's a sorceress-type cult thing, and they don't like them, and then he gets arrested, and they're going to use him to get rid of a problem they have, and these things lead to uh, subplots and a major plot that these creatures that he's fighting, someone's doing something to them and changing them or augmenting them, and doing more um, experiments on them, in a sense, because one, like, talks. 
and it shouldn't be able to talk. Now, again, like I said, you're going through a Witcher story that's telling you the story as a prequel to what the TV show is. And then from that young man with a beard mustache, you know, tightly trimmed, handsome man, whatever, he, they show his youth as a witcher. And there is a lot to do with the witches as children and what they go through and some don't make it. And there's really good visual horror and gore enough to keep um, it feeling like you're watching a witcher. So I'm going to give it a lot of props, but this connective story with what they told I think they tried to little do a little too much. Um, again, I don't want to be confused when I find this subplot is being done, and there's the culprit here. We find out who happens to be uh, Professor Mir's mentor, or uh, you know, the guy who's recruiting and I guess helping make the witches. But there's a sorceress villain foe but she's not the villain foe until she finds out that it's Professor Mir's mentor who's making monsters to keep the witches in business because they, they get paid and it didn't make sense I, I totally lost interest in that I'm like you have to make it a little more appealing to me I just didn't it just fell so flat, I, I, it really kind of shocked me out of the movie. Again, it's got great action, there's some great, there are great elements to this whole thing. And as a whole, like I said when I started this, it's a very good animated movie. But, for, for me, personally now, maybe I haven't worked on a traditional, real, animated script. I mean, I've written my own, and the scripts I've worked on were traditional Hollywood scripts, let's say. You know, there's a formula you follow, blah, 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 blah. So maybe I'm missing something here, but I don't think you told the story properly in the way where I am constantly engrossed and it builds on me because you can tell that's what they were doing. And like I said, you're going through the movie, Vesemir uh, as a youth and his man, let's say 80 years old when he's really like a 30, and then it, it cuts to him as a child, and the mentor guy, what is his fucking name? Christ. Um, you know, I wish I could have uh, properly done this. Where's my staff here? we fucking producers behind the fucking glass and stuff. <laughs> fucking nightmare. I don't know what his fucking name is, okay? But, I think it's like Degleb or something like that. Oh, I don't know. Deglin. Okay, I think it's Deglin. So he admits he creates the monsters. Now, mind you, this is a movie, right? Uh, 83 minutes, uh, great for an animated movie. Now, you see him recruit Vesemir as a kid, because that's one of the flashbacks, and it is set up properly, like what these kids have to go through to become a witcher. And it's, it's not pretty, it's part of the major foundation of uh, the great, you know, um, debate within the culture from what I put into my campaign. What do we do when we make these witches? But you, the process is not perfected, and you're losing more pe kids, children, than you are producing witches and what they have to go through. So it becomes really uh, in depth and interesting. And again, uh, you'll find these elements throughout this movie and maybe be fascinated with them, but when you're connecting that to going back to the present, doing a little bit of a love story, then doing a campaign type thing where he teams up with the sorceress to go do the thing, and then the plot further gives clues that it is Witcher, it's the process that makes Witchers, which is creating these new monsters. And then you find out that, well, which your business is low, which is kind of stupid. Like, okay. And then the, the mentor witcher is creating new monsters. It just fucking doesn't work for me. And there's even a line somewhere through it where there's a couple of the other witches, because they show several of them here and there. And 
they're like, oh, blah, 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 about the money. And Vista is like, oh, you know, the monsters will go in the winter or something, have babies, and we'll have new monsters to fight. And, like, the whole crux of this motivation is just bad. I mean, really bad to me. So, again, when I say, like, a, go over the script, you see this connective tissue, and I would want to make it way stronger, something way deeper. And, yes, there might be elements here that I'm skipping over because I'm, you know, I'm not doing a four-hour fucking podcast on it. But, you know, I'm... I'm in a good place, I thought, of watching this movie. And, again, I've done some recent Witcher stuff. I am fascinated with it. I'm a real big fan. And, again, I'm going to give this a recommendation and say it's a very good animated movie. But the way they connected this story-wise and plot-wise, it left me feeling, like, angry and upset that that's what they settled on. Because there's a point in this uh, movie where when you find out that it's Deglin that, that does it, he's not instantly fucking beaten down and killed or whatever. Like, And I'm like, okay, I get it that he was your mentor, but the story doesn't care. Like, The surrounding elements of the movie doesn't care because now the, the, the sorceress has got to be the villain. But was she the villain? Like... I mean, there are some elements in here where you're going, look, there is a problem out here. We've got superhuman fucking people getting paid to kill monsters. And they make illusions to people being ripped off and it's a scam. And even some of the witches are like, oh, you made him think he was cursed. You know, and so... There's this uh, rivalry or, you know, heated thing, and there's a hint of competition or whatever. I don't, I didn't like all of it. I'm going to be honest. This, watching this animated movie, I'm thoroughly enjoyed in that sense. But when the storyline just shocks me out, it pulls me out, and it, it it's telling me something that my brain is going, just stop it. You're ruining this for me. And, you know, I'm not saying you're going to ruin the whole thing, but. I'm watching this, and I'm watching the guy be revealed as the person behind it all, and Vesemir doesn't team up with the sorceress to take him down. I was so fucking confused. Like, you know, and yeah, and if you're gonna, in the storyline, make it so Deglin is actually not getting out of this alive, and Vesemir is the next mentor to the last batch of witches that escaped as children because there were children in Kaer Mohan or whatever the fuck you pronounce it and I didn't like it I it just was by the end of the movie going fuck fuck I'm gonna I'm gonna I, this is an enjoyable movie there's so many elements of it that are really good borderline great for the genre for the fans of the show I'm sure and that's another thing I should get to where do I sit in this um fandom i think my nitpicking here because it really is generally nitpicking but i do admit story cohesion is important right so maybe it's a little bit more of a nitpick but does that come from me quote, my air quotes quote unquote thinking i'm a writer or i've written scripts i wrote a novel like it might this fucking guy and a part of me tries to be that when I do some reviews. And I want to be honest when something is, I love something, but I kind of know it's not great. Or I see something that's probably great and it's just not for me. And this is blend, right? So all that psychology type stuff does go into this. I'm aware of it. And I think that's where this lies because I got a feeling people who are real fans of the nitty gritty of The Witcher didn't give a fuck. And it was actually appealing to them. It's so like, maybe they know there's more of a reason. And again, you know, I'll watch it again, maybe, because it was good enough. It's 83 minutes. Did I miss plot elements because, you know, I made coffee or I didn't, you know, maybe I didn't pause it, get back. There are elements like that, that it just happens when you're watching movies. And there's that little uh, warning that that happened with me. But even if that is true, I don't like the weight of the story and the motivation I, i'm not buying 
witches need uh well not witches yeah they need so many they need more monsters to stay in business but again I come from a traditional dungeons and dragons world I'm in the Witcher world, because I did the, my last one was on the prequel TV show, four episodes or whatever it was, and it showed how the worlds kind of collided, and um, these things came from different worlds, and it's actually four worlds blended into one type shit, it's interesting, um, but again, I will not be surprised if fans of the books and the games, real diehard fans, are going to think I'm an idiot for this, but when you got the weight of the script, uh, the the dialogue and all that stuff, and the plot is important, I needed more weight to it. I didn't think that there was this pressing need, and you know, I guess, like I said, yeah, there were elements written, but. I wouldn't have gone that way. I just thought it was, yeah, I don't know, maybe an easy way out of uh, building this up. But then when you do do that, why confuse me with this aspect of it? And in two major sections here that I was a little confused. And, you know, I get it. You want to have the reveal at the end with the children. And one of them, spoiler, is when we know... Geralt or Geralt, how the fuck you say it? And to get there, you had to do these certain things, and there were elements of love and the relationship, and they handled the balance of tone okay, but I did notice a little nitpicks on that. And again, when I'm going through the movie, and I'm like, wait, that's going on okay, and then, well, this doesn't flow for me, and it just kind of jumbles everything and wait yeah he's revealed as um the major guy behind it but you're now fighting with him and are you going that it's just like because are they right because that's what part of the thing is this sorceress and people they want them killed like they're like oh execute them blah blah blah, blah. and so i get that's what's going on from the beginning but when he when vesemir is on the mission and he's with the sorceress and they're dealing with the issue and more of the plot is revealed the more of the the clues like i said lead to wait a second these monsters are being augmented and controlled and it looks like it's the same process that is made to make witches and like oh shit isn't it at i thought at that point there was going to be more of the story plot where maybe and it's there, I guess, in, to, in a certain extent, and we will just draw from it, you know, and it leads us there that um, the witches are wrong. Like, it's it's bad what you're doing to make these kids into witches. Now, if it was just to go get your flu shot, nonsense, and wear a mask, you know, fine. But no, the process is, you know, alchemy and wizardry and, you know, because the witcher world's a little different and... It really messes up the kids. It poisons them, and some don't survive. So this whole angle, I thought was going to be more towards the sorceress chick's part, where there would be almost a understanding. Now, I know maybe that can't be done because of the lore and what's happening. Like I said, this is a prequel to the show with the Witcher Geralt, rather than the other live-action show which was like a thousand years before The Witcher and showed the first Witcher being made. And that's a live action. So this sits there and, like I said, you know the weight of what they're doing. Now, for my world, I've made it a little different. It's, you know, I had to make up my own little unique thing about The Witcher. I didn't place it here. I didn't place the, my story in The Witcher world. Um, but the process is still the same and the, uh, the debates and the um, conflict is still there. You know, what you're doing to children and is it necessary? And, you know, this process is killing more than uh, getting successful. So there's so much there. And again, it's children. I get it. The weight is, it's terrible. So wasn't that going to be used at the end? Because what they did is they make it seem like, oh, fuck it. 
rest of me is like, oh, I know you fucked up everything, but let's fight together. And they gotta beat the sorceress chick, and the sorceress chick, like, I, maybe I missed the ultimate plot where she twirled her mustache or something. And I get, like I said, I know she was there from the beginning as a person who's like, oh, execute them. And they do this cutback, and there's a little twist reveal about the woman who's on the council and his past love. Yeah, you know, you, you got, like I said, some good elements in here. We're not, um, uh, just shitting on this. This is just me, I think, more as a writer, you know, someone who just maybe thinks he sees the flaws and, you know, it just triggers in my brain and it starts a counterproductive debate in my head while I'm watching it, like, I roll my eyes, like, come on, you're going to make these illusions and tell me that they're worried about the money coming in and the Witcher, whatever. I mean, these are superhuman beings, like, yeah, besides taking their potions and stuff and getting enhanced for certain aspects of their work, in general, they're faster, stronger, like, stop that there's going to be um, any drawbacks to that, because the only one I could see is maybe Geralt, because he's got white hair, his eyes are fucked up, it's more to the sense of, he stands out as something that's different. Well, these witches seem to be just, you know, they only get white skin and black veins when they drink their potions. Now, on the show, that's like that, too. But Geralt is so different with his hair and the way he stands out. I think it's lost on me as maybe not the big nerd. But you're getting work. I'm sorry. You're, you're fucking superhuman. Like, and I get it. There's a, you know, maybe a blue stains, you know, blue no matter what, or, you know, they, they're going to stick by the Witcher. They've been indoctrinated there, you know, from children. They have a code and it means something to them. So when it's revealed that his mentor, uh, Deglin, whatever the fuck his name is, is the bad guy, it's like, fuck it. You know what? We're, we're, we're witches. And well, the witches, the sorceress chick wants us dead anyway. But I thought they could have elevated the, you know, the dialogue and the story more and made me feel more for the characters. Because, like I said, once things start happening and I'm already a little confused, because like I said, the con way it connects in storyline with a little bit of flashback to the present and the voice acting. And oh, so here's one of my nitpicks. Uh, might be a major nitpick. There's voice acting in here. That is muffled, and more than once I was like, had to really pay attention and up the volume because this the way they spoke into the microphone was not adequate. It just didn't work, and I noticed it a couple of times. So I'm going to give that in a little bit of a nitpick and a knock. Uh, just being drawn out, like you know, you've got this, you know, action. You've got uh, people talking, and then and then. Okay. It just didn't fucking work And it happened a couple of times So there goes the other knock So storyline, weight of the Motivation and all that is a little Is weak in my opinion And the voice acting at times Drops out and you don't Really hear what's going on clearly It has to do with people talking Conversations, maybe in a bar type You know, but when the action's good Like I said, there's so much to like in this um, some of the kills and the, the angle, the way they build up the action. Uh, I talked about what did I? Okay, so Marvel did a TV show called What If, and it was in, it's an animated show on different takes of the universe. If you in this universe, you made a right instead of a left. You know, you saved this person in this universe. In this universe, you didn't. And what would happen to the stories? And what I liked about it, although some of those stories I didn't like. I thought it overall worked well for fans. So I wasn't interested in um, episode four, let's say. But they had a good way, a great way, of the animation having weight and momentum with everything else that goes along with it. Because remember, this is a medium you need. Sound is important. Uh, weapon sounds, movement. Um, you know, and does it have weight on the screen? And I think... Um, the Witcher, Nightmare of the Wolf, does that excellent. There's a 
way to use the camera and build up someone running and when the blow comes ways of showing you know beautiful you know acrobatic type moves that witches can do in the battle and animation is the way to do it right because i gotta be honest you know tv show is never going to be able to match in my in, in my opinion what he can do in the game or maybe in the books right and yeah you got great special effects like the matrix and stuff but the animations really can draw it out like how superhuman they are and with that the music here and there really keying up and not overdone with too many loud bangs because like i said there are quiet moments that you're supposed to be shocked and just go moments and you know what torture it is to go through this process as a child there's so much good in this i feel i don't want to i'm talking too much about the negatives because again it's more of a personal thing with me considering myself somewhat of a writer and if i was writing this as a campaign or dungeons and dragons type uh, thing as i was doing the writing i would have dropped that premise of the uh needing money and one of the major villains is my mentor because he's making modules so we can be in business and again i don't buy it i don't buy it even talking about it again i might miss things so I'll go, i'm gonna watch it again it is interesting and i liked it enough to watch it again so again when i started this this is a very good animated movie it's got all the elements that you need to propel it to the end for me though i found flaws and it, my interest dropped out from the weight of the plot and the motivation and a little bit of confusion and what's going on and there was a couple of dropouts of the you know voice acting but i'm going to say this is a success it's a recommendation it's people who like the witcher world are going to love it i think and people who aren't into it are going to not be bogged down by the flaws that i personally bring the baggage i bring and i think that's my honest evaluation of it i'm looking at it you know as a critic in that way and maybe i didn't allow myself to just be captivated by it and and just propelled you know because there's some great voice acting in here like i said when it's you know there's just uh elements that really stand out as uh good not all about groundbreaking you know for an animated movie but Top notch in that sense. Uh, they put a lot of effort and love into it, it feels like. I just wish that plot was tightened up, a little more weight to the motivation. And they kind of did, but more towards the sorcerer side. Like I said, I wish there was more of that debate where they realized how wrong they are and what it means to the future of the witches, because this is the element that shows you witches are killed and we've only got another batch left. And yeah, we can always do things like there are. There were witches out there, right? And, you know, like the Jedi, they, they weren't purged. So, overall, I'm really uh, happy I watched it. it. It does add to the lore for me. Um, like I said, uh, someone who runs a witcher campaign using my Dungeons and Dragons rules, but I took the settings almost totally different, except I pulled the elements from my own world type thing. And um, there's a value to this animated show for sure uh, and again it's just my and i just sometimes look at things and wish they were done a little differently and i'm just letting that kind of deter my you know gushing over this animated movie and i think a lot of people are gonna like it i think i'll be will be in a minority of the nitpick although people are probably gonna maybe notice the voice acting Oh, you know what? And that could also be my problem. What if I'm not updated with the latest Dolby, whatever the fuck? And because I had that with doing podcasts. I was experimenting doing tests when I first started. I was doing live broadcasts. And what I started noticing is when I was being a moderator for people and getting into the uh, the community, I would sometimes tell them, oh, um, you're a little low, or this and that. And... A couple of times someone said to me what are you using and like oh no you're wearing headphones i'm like no it's coming over my speakers 
And when you do that, if you don't have the right, like I said, Dolby or something, channels are lowered and dropped and given priority through the fucking magic of speaker world, whatever the fuck that is. And so, yeah, it could be me too. So maybe if I was wearing headphones, it'd be fucking awesome. Or if I had the right setup. So I'm not going to fault it. It was just something that I noticed. I'm going to think that the plot, the weight of the motivation for me is lacking. And I don't think, again, that's going to be something people really worry about. Could there be a couple of people out there who are kind of confused of what's going on because of the story? Yeah, does he look too you know, handsome and you know, smarky, whatever the fuck you want to use? Yeah, uh, you know, I would have went with a more toned down world with, um, you know, more of a muted emotional spectrum for these guys. And maybe that's more of what I took from Geralt or the process of being a witcher. Uh, you know, your emotions and um, those things that make you... Uh, seem so friendly and charming are kind of dulled. And here they just brought it up to and just said for me that that didn't really matter. You know. And that could be just, you know, my, my place in this fandom. Where do I rank in this you know, take my nerd badge away, fine. I had to take my friend's nerd badge away. She fucking you know, you know this is what happens when you're a real friend. You know, you'd have to Tell them to show you the car, you take it away, and fine. If you gotta take my Witcher nerd card away, oh, I'm okay with that. I wish I would uh, have done more gushing here, but that plot, story, cohesion, and motivation is important to me, I guess, in a way. And I hope that my enjoyment of this does come through, because I would recommend this. Especially if you're a fan of The Witcher and the show, and even if you don't know about the games, I think it does enough. I think it works on a um, a level that is entertaining enough, uh, gripping enough, and yes, it's not overdone with a little bit of the love story and you know what's missing from their childhood and what happens when you have a childhood crush and they age and you don't. So. She looks 60, 70, and he looks 30 when he's 8, you know, so it, it's got great elements in it. And I'll even say that great elements, um, some spectacular angles and cuts that worked. And again, I think it's hard for animation to get things to have momentum, to feel like they have weight. And that's why I gave the Marvel animated show What If Praise. And even though four, four out of the 15 whatever fucking episodes I didn't like, it doesn't mean that the show is shit. It just means that I wasn't interested in where they took the story and the plot was going on. And, like, it didn't have weight for me. And I think this has a little bit of that for me, but the elements of this are somewhat spectacular in that way. Very good. You know, there's a lot to like in this show. And I do recommend it. The Witcher, Nightmare of the Wolf. I would watch this, especially if you're a fan. Like I said, I think it does enough. And for some people, Vesemir is a beloved uh, character. For me, it's a little different. For me, I had <laughs> I won't go into it, but there's a, you know, a fan base that I am kind of a guest in, and I'm trying to acclimate myself. And I think I did enough work when I created my campaign, but again, I wasn't there from the ground up. I wasn't immersed from the first game and playing everything, and I'm going to give it that. The Witcher, Nightmare of the Wolf. Very good animated movie. Some great stuff, elements in here that work very well. A little bit of a nitpick with the sound, with the voice acting. But the voices were great. You got, like, awesome people doing the voice work in this. I'll admit that. We've got one of my favorite actresses ever from Battlestar Galactica in here. Uh, what's her name? Mary McC McC McDonald. So, you know. You're going to get me right off the bat. And didn't they use uh, Henry Cavill, too, I think? But in general, like I said, um, enough that you notice. Like, it came through. So it doesn't... There's not enough bad things or nitpicks that bog this thing down. So give it a shot. Watch it. I hope everybody's doing well. My best to you and yours. I'll talk to you all next time. Bye.